So out of nowhere, they revealed the release of this car and a week later, I had one in my hand. <laughs> Looks like this could be very similar to the tried and true rival MT-10, a little smaller and with some other differences, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I literally have no clue. This is my first time seeing any of these. Well, anyway, let's move this one and we'll break this one open right now. Get her out of there. Wow, definitely a little smaller. All right, so we're gonna just take this outside first. We're gonna go over all the bench related items here in a few minutes, cause I really wanna see what this thing's got. This here is my brother from the same mother. And he has never touched a hobby grade RC car, so he's gonna give it a try too. But really, he's just here to cause destruction and turmoil. Oh yeah, she gonna be fast. She's feisty little thing. All right, do a jumpy poo. Uh, stuck in the turned position. What's that all about? Only two jumps in? That's not good. Hey, if you're watching this video, it's probably because you like RC cars. So make sure you like this video for us and don't forget to subscribe. I don't think you'll regret it. Well, the servo itself has locked up and called a quits already. Even after removing the servo saver and trying to turn it with pliers, it's just completely locked up. Well, no big deal. A Main Hobby sent me a brand new servo under warranty. No questions asked. It was here within three days. I'm still hopeful, but only two jumps in and already have a part for the Derby City Boneyard. That's not good. So we're gonna get that going, but first I'm gonna turn on my sweat reducing machine so I don't exacerbate my perspiration and besmirch my workbench. All right, now we just turn everything on and make sure the servo is centered. Straighten the front wheels, install the servo saver assembly and check operation. Double check that the servo endpoints are set correctly and now we're ready for round two. Well, brother couldn't make it back out today, but don't worry, we are gonna do some ramps again here in just a second. Probably either until the battery dies or it breaks again. I really like the way this handles on the ground though. Got brakes too. 30.3 miles an hour. Very easy to control. Well, sometimes. So this thing does work well in grass, but this grass is a little too long for it. But over here in this shorter grass, it does a little better. Reverse is really slow. It's really responsive, the steering too.
starting to sound a little rough. Now it's really sounding bad. Hmm. Holy overloaded garbage truck. That was much better than last time. For one, we didn't even lose any body clips and it certainly had its fair share of spills. We've got a lot to go over because uh, great customer service from A-Main Hobbies and or Team Associated. Really great performance out of one of the tiniest motors I've ever seen in an RC car. Seems like pretty great durability. A uh, few things I'm gonna go over about it though. For one, it's really hot outside and the motor on this got really hot. So something to watch out for if you're running this on a pretty hot day. Even my camera has been cutting out on me. So can't really fault the car. The car never actually shut down on me. ESC didn't get crazy blazing hot, just the motor. Now obviously we gotta see what's going on with, uh, I assume it's the pinion gear came off, but We'll look at that in a second. These tires are awesome. They're not too slippery and they're not too grippy. Definitely filled with foam. In fact, I will probably try these on a lot of my other smaller-ish scale cars. I have a feeling I'm gonna be buying a few sets of those. And if anyone wants to try it before I do, I'll put a link to them in the description. Typical headlights popping out and of course getting damaged because they're not glued in place. So if you wanna keep those, just glue them before you drive it. This actually looks like it's the same body style as the version two of the rival MT-10. And here's a true 1 10th scale. Here's the true 1 14th scale. And then here it is next to a 1 12th scale HBX. If you've never seen an HBX RC car, I advise you check them out because they are one of the best budget brands out there. I'll put an HBX playlist down in the description. All right, here's the rest of what comes in the box. I'm not the biggest fan of this controller. It does okay. It just I don't know, I guess there's really nothing bad about it. It works fine, it just looks funky. It comes with a battery strap. You don't have to use this. I'll show you how that works in a second. Destructions, more destructions, troubleshooting, wheel wrench. Oh, just a little magazine catalog. And then your owner's manual, which, uh, oh, it's not full color. Showing all the parts that you'll ever need, along with diagrams showing how everything goes together. All those wonderful things. The body clips are smaller than normal. And of course the body itself did take some damage. Uh, it has all been biased towards the rear end though. I did have trouble with uh, these motor leads coming unplugged. If you just find a better way to zip tie them down, that probably won't happen. So the battery has this plastic hold down clamp held in place with more body pins. However, I just used foam, but you can actually adjust the position of these two battery holders on the side by removing that bolt and that bolt. You can scoot either or both of them in. Then you also have the choice of using this battery strap by sliding it underneath there and you can use that instead. Use that battery strap, you can fit some bigger batteries in here like this guy, which I will link all three of these in the description. So look how tiny that motor is. I mean, it's the size of my thumb. That's some really impressive uh, performance out of that tiny little thing. ESC sitting on its side in that bracket you saw earlier. It's got a little heat sink on it. It's got a separate receiver, so you can upgrade this thing if you want to. We have metal adjustable links with plastic ends, a metal steering rack. That all plastic design guarantees that there's no metal chassis to bend and stay bent, not to mention affordability. And that's right, this car has a center differential like its big brother. Center differentials are super cool. It's right there attached to the spur gear. And that's a big part of what's given it its good handling on the ground. We had great customer service. You saw they sent me a brand new servo and we didn't have any problems out of this one, luckily. They, they do make an upgraded metal version of this thing. Uh, I imagine it would be more durable than this one, but hey, I guess maybe that first one was, I don't know. For a small car, this is one of the best landing jumps control of any smaller than 12th scale car that I have. It was just as easy as a larger vehicle. A lot of times these smaller things, they are so light, they bounce around and usually lose control when it lands. This one did not. 
A lot of that is definitely due to these tires. These tires are great. These shocks are very well tuned. They are plastic. There's no metal except for the rod looks like, but no signs of any type of oil leakage and no signs of any type of breakage either. It does do wheelies pretty well, but once you get about halfway through the battery pack, it doesn't wheelie as easily. You know, it did backflips pretty easily. Even the MT-10 can't do a backflip on a 2S battery. Even has about the same speed as the MT-10. Actually, I think it beats it by about a mile an hour or two, again, on a 2S battery. Obviously, it front flips just fine. All right, let's take a look here. Ugh. Man, I don't know if that was installed bad or if the pinion slipped, but the pinion was not touching the entire spur gear. So our spur gear is destroyed. You can see the pinion was only touching half of it. But anyway, there's the center differential. Obviously we have plastic spur gear. Yeah, that wasn't super tight, so it is possible that it slid down. Yeah, I bet it did. We'll make sure when we reinstall that after we get a new spur gear to line it up right. We'll Loctite this screw and we will never have a problem again. <laughs> all this is pretty expected when you do stuff out there on concrete, so I'm not upset at all. And so far I recommend it. A few things obviously happened. Some of them are my fault. I'd say if you jump this thing and you can find a place where you land on the dirt instead of the concrete, that would be better, but that's better for any RC car at all, ever in all of any RC car. And for anyone who wants to know, it does look like you could probably put a larger pinion on here because there is that geared cam and there are metal teeth down in that motor mount. So it looks like the pinion and spur gear mesh is adjustable and you could put a larger gear in there. All right, well, that was a pretty awesome car, I'll be honest. But I will say it does not beat out the MT-10 in durability and probably even most HBXs. Our next video is actually gonna be doing a review on a 14th scale HBX. This isn't necessarily one of their top end models, but it should still be an interesting one. Again, I've got a playlist for HBX stuff linked in the description. If you found this video helpful or entertaining, I would really appreciate a like. If you're new or just unsubscribed for some reason, hit that subscribe button, complete with notification bell, and we will see you guys real soon.